Trapping plays a very important role in modern-day wildlife management. Professional wildlife biologists monitor fur bearer populations to maintain a healthy and sustainable harvest of this important, renewable natural resource. Trapping provides recreation and income for licensed trappers across this country. The Fur Shed Series, brought to you by Who's Your Trapper Outdoors. Who's Your Trapper Supply. Leatherwood Creek Trapping Sense. HTS Productions. Who's Your Trapper Deer Sense and Leatherwood Wildlife Art. All right, working on a few coon. I just come out and do three or four or five a night or a little more if I got more time. I mean, I usually don't get out of here until nine o'clock or something. So, um, come out and do a few. These have been we we typically skin everything uh, in the fall as we catch it, and then um, and then uh, scrape it and dry it in the spring of the year. So this is March. So we're working through them. Um, just go a quick go over, um, make sure all the burrs, mud clods, and that kind of thing are out. Make sure the tail's opened up all the way down. Common mistake that beginners make is they don't open these tails up, and when that's sitting on the stretcher, now I'm hanging them upside down, but typically if it's on a stretcher, that grease is rendering off, or that little bit of fat that's in the skin renders off, it goes down that tail, and then it causes it to spoil. It's not a real big deal if you lose the tail, but it just doesn't look as nice. So, um, so that's basically it. On that, just kind of, like I said, just kind of go over them. So it's still just a little bit frozen. This one, this one, the tail needs to be opened up. All right. <clears throat> Flush and coon, I always start on the side. Um, so I've got the belly and the back. The back's the most difficult part to scrape. That way I've got a little bit of easy and a little bit of more difficult. Start at the side, start with good firm, um, just really bear down short strokes. And you got it started. A lot of times with, with uh, new people that are learning this, they want to sit there and they want to run over the top of the fat. What happens is that pushes it down and it slicks it up and it's harder to grab a hold of. So stay behind the fat. So just real short, like I said, just bear down, bear down strokes. Just move it, just push the fat all the way down. Then when you get, get to the bottom, just pull your skin up, lean against, lean against the coon, or whatever for your scraping. Push the bottom off. Coon over. Same thing on the other side. Off. A little bit around this front leg. And this takes some elbow grease, but it's more just developing the technique for it. Once you got it, then you got it. You won't, it won't be that difficult for you. Flip your knife over and use the sharp edge for behind the ears, down about the shoulders, the most difficult area of a coon to scrape. Kind of take it, this knife's kind of dull. Kind of take it, work it down. I'll tell you what, I've got one of these Weebies, and I really like this knife too. And it is nice and sharp. Now you gotta be careful because it's very sharp on the on the sharp edge. But it's a, this is a nice knife.
And this one I'm barely pushing because, like I said, it's a good sharp knife. And I'm, I've got the bottom skin, I've got the skin on top of the beam, which gives me um, a cushion, actually. So you got a little room for air. Um, and then flip your knife over. Once you get to the shoulders, you can scrape that off. Just push it on down. Just remember with these weeby knives, it's a good quality knife, and, it's, and I, I really like them. Just remember it's sharp, and which is a, a real benefit, um, but it also takes a little bit of getting used to. I actually, the first one I did this season with uh, the weeby, I actually nicked it because it was, it was uh, sharper than what I'm typically used to. Um, obviously, once you get used to it, it's a, it's a definite benefit. So. And you want to scrape down the tail, get a little grease on that edge, you can actually push that off with your knife. It's not a big deal, that will uh, render off as the skin dries. And there we go, you got it. Try to keep your handles clean, keep, keep them grease free. That way it won't slide in your hand. That's another thing about this weeby with the square handles. It doesn't it doesn't roll in your hands like the the knives that have a round handle. Gives you a good grip. So uh, anyways, I I can't I can't say anything about this bad about this knife. It's a really nice knife. So and I, I definitely like that sharp edge. So anyways, if you haven't got one and you need one, you might give that one a try. I think you'll like it. That's it. All right, using boards. I've got them pre-marked. Um, XL, 2XL, 3XL. You can't you can't force it to go to a line, but if you're close, you can get it. And there's no reason to force it if you're in between lines. So just the more you force it, the thinner it makes the first. So this this coon right here is a big coon. It's easily going to make the 3XL once we pin this down here. So just keep an eye on your line. The line's right there. We're going to make sure we get over that. When they size the cocoon, they, they measure from the tip of the nose to the highest side. So you want to make these sides even. So in other words, this side should be the same height as, as this side here. Otherwise, it'll just measure to the highest side. So. I do. I personally don't pleat the tail. Um, as long as you don't stretch this thing, overstretch it. You really, in my view, you really don't need to do that. I, uh, I guess I'm a bit of an old school on that. I'm, I kind of like the tails out. You don't have to pull it tight, but um, I personally don't pleat it. For one thing, here is March uh, 2018. Cream prices are not very good. Um, All the coon that's put up by big fur buyers, they don't even go on wood, they go on wire stretchers. I guarantee you nobody's pleating the coon in, the, in that case, so the coon tail. So we're just gonna spend a little bit of time tacking this out. I'm gonna spend a lot of time. I gotta nail it, I gotta tack at the very tip of the tail, because I hang these upside down. That way the tail's not drooping over. It dries flat, flat. I flip it over. First thing we're going to do is we're going to take the back legs and we're going to um, tack those down like that. I just use a little tacking. Some of the pass wood is softer than others. I don't know if you guys have noticed that or not, but the, uh, save your fingers if you if you uh, don't do that. Now these inspection windows. I've seen guys get them clear out to the edges. You don't want to get them that big. Basically, you just want to cut the slack out, the loose skin. And that is plenty big right there. I'm going to actually tighten this up a little bit. I'm going to pull this edge down, make sure that that doesn't 
when these things dry, they shrink, so that pulls up like this. So you want to make sure this edge is, is tacked in place so you don't lose your, lose your size. Now we're going to just, I'm just going to close this up a little bit. Fingers get greasy and it's hard to hold onto these pins. These push pins are really handy. They're really nice. They're, they're, you can't buy these at an office supply store. They're, uh, most, most trapper supplies have them, including us. It's a good, it's an excellent fur handling pin. They got a lot, a lot longer pin on them than the typical push pins that you about to see. Make sure your symmetrical front legs aren't too long. I'm gonna cut those just a little bit shorter. Front legs you want them short enough that they're not drooping over and you have skin against skin because that. That would spoil. Don't forget your wedge, otherwise you're not going to get that coon off there. The wedge is what gives you the slack, so once this coon's dry, you pull this out, and that'll give you enough slack where you can slide the skin off the board. And the lower lip, I'm going to cut that off too. We don't need that either. That's got, that potentially could be skin against skin. The thing about coons, Beavers, muskrats, mink that are sold skin out. Don't put borax and salt and that kind of stuff on them. Um, it'll discolor the skin, probably drop you down to a second quality. Just stay with stay with the um, um, just the skin itself drying. If you got it flesh drill ice, it'll it'll hold up just fine. Stretch this other one. And this coon is going to barely make an XL, so we're just going to we're going to just make sure it does. We're not going to try to go any further with it, but we are going to make sure that we get the XL out of it. Here again, no reason, no, no reason to pull that tail real tight. As long as we get that XL size out of it, we're good. I know we're not going to make the two XL, so no sense in trying to over crank it. Pin the tip, tip of the tail. Put a few pins in here, and you can actually lay a piece of cardboard over this, and just and then make sure it's flat, and then just pin that down in a couple places. The cardboard will actually um, help absorb some of that grease and will allow that tail to still dry, even though it's not necessarily exposed to the air. I'm, I'm pinning this because I actually don't have any cardboard here, so both work just fine. The cardboard, once you get used to it, it's actually a little bit quicker. over and this is a just cut the slack out these are both the both of these coons that I just stretched were females so if it was a male you want to probably go above where the, where the penis is at um, and then make sure you pin this edge right here so you don't lose any skin to shrink each. If that shrinks, it pushes up like this and then you're losing that size on the edge. And the, when they grade these, they measure the highest side, so it's important to uh, have that well secured as it dries so it's not going anywhere. I'm going to turn this up just a little bit more than that. And keep your inspection window relatively small. It doesn't have to be that large. They can certainly see what the king looks like. 
if you cut the inspection window too large, then you're losing that. If the coon's got them, the nice silver flank uh, hairs. And I know one thing I need to do is I need a couple blocks of wood up here to keep that stretcher or that coon from sliding on that wall. So I can put the stretcher between it. That's one thing I gotta get done in here. It's kind of annoying. Coon skin sliding back and forth. You know, if coons were bringing 30, 40 bucks a piece, uh, I might spend a little more time with them. But what I'm doing is pretty much, we'll get, you know, this is, this is a good quality put up. It'll get you the benefit of the doubt. And, um, which is the best price available for that coon. Yeah, see what I mean? It's pretty slippery. So, and then grab a wedge, stick it in there like that. That way when it's dry, you can pull that out of there and it'll give you the slack so you get the coon off the board. Make sure your front legs are not touching, skin against skin. Cut them a little bit shorter if you need to. And cut the top legs. Because that's if that if you leave that on there, that's just skin against skin again. And that'll it could spoil because there's no air getting underneath there. We definitely don't want anything spoiling. Even that little piece right there spoiling, it's got a bad smell to it. The fur grater, that's always an automatic alarm if you got something that smells a little rotten. So you don't want that. Okay, man, I'll just hang these up. 